Hey, it's Stuart. I thought I'd record this video just to share a couple of really interesting charts that I've come across over the last few weeks about the US share market. Uh, you know, it's delivered about 13.6% in returns over the last 10 years, which means that if you had have invested $100 10 years ago, that $100 would now be worth more than $350. It's a huge return, you know, more than significantly more than what the long-term average is. Um, but really what we should be more concerned about or focused on is what future returns are going to be, not necessarily persuaded too much by historic returns. And so what I want to do is share a couple of charts I've come across on Twitter uh, just to demonstrate kind of what we're dealing with. And then what I'd like to do is uh, offer a bit of a suggestion on how you could potentially accommodate these risks. So the first chart uh, compares the S&P 500 to the Russell 2000. So it's really what is the value of the top 500 companies compared to the top 2000 companies. And you can see that it's at all time peak. You know, in 1999, it was at this level just before the tech wreck, uh, which was a, a massive decline in value. Uh, this next chart uh, shows that the top five stocks now account for about 25, 28%, 28.6% of the total index. So we can see that there's a huge concentration risk as well. Um, so not only is the S&P 500 worth a lot more, it's been driven really by the top 10 stocks. Uh, and the next chart shows the return driven by those top 10 stocks. Uh, since the end of 2022. So really the last two and a half years, as you can see, if we stripped out the top 10 stocks, the returns wouldn't have been that great. It's all in those top 10 stocks. The next uh, chart is actually a table, not a chart. And it shows, you know, what are the valuation metrics compared to early 2000s? So just before the tech wreck, which was a significant drop in the share market a pretty major event from a volatility perspective. And we can see at the end of July, the PE ratios were at those peak levels. Uh, and, you know, history doesn't necessarily repeat itself, but as the saying goes, it rhymes. And it's certainly rhyming at the moment. In fact, the next chart shows that the there's more than... Um, 27% of the companies listed in the S&P 500 have a PE ratio, a price earnings ratio of 50 times. So that's more than a quarter have a PE ratio of more than 50 times. And just to give you a bit of context here, a normal PE is typically somewhere between 16 and 20, which is a broad range, but you know it, it puts it in perspective, I think, of how significantly overvalued or overpriced uh, some parts of the market are. And in fact, the last chart that I'd like to show you is a price to sales ratio. Now, price to sales ratio is kind of interesting because it's not really measuring productivity, it's measuring sales growth. And so if we want to all believe in the growth story, you know, that it's all about growth stocks, it's all about technology, it's all about AI, all these sorts of things, robotics, everything in the future, and it's not really about profitability, then a price to sales ratio should be a good measure to use. But even a price to sales ratio, you can see uh, since 2000, it's at all time highs. So it doesn't matter whether the company has, you know, strong sales momentum or strong profitability or not. Uh, it's all been, you know, not all, but a lot of, large part of the market is uh, certainly overvalued. And so how are you going to accommodate this risk? Because as investors, we can't necessarily take a bet against AI. I mean, my personal viewpoint is AI is going to have a tremendous impact on productivity. We're seeing it in our business already. You know, I can foresee over the next couple of years, the productivity per hour works in our business will increase substantially thanks to AI to automate a lot of repetitive tasks that uh, that AI will be able to handle. So, you know, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for business. And I think the businesses that are early adopters of AI 
will be well in front of their competitors over the next uh, few years. So I think it's probably bigger than the internet, to be honest. So as investors, we want to have exposure to that sector. But it's not growth at any price. We want growth at a reasonable price, which, you know, at the end of the day, we want a growth stock, but we don't want to overpay for it. I mean, the problem with overpaying for a stock in terms of paying a very high PE is the only way you're ever going to return, earn a return is if the actual earnings uh, beat the already lofty expectations of that stock. That's the only way you can earn a return. So it's pretty risky. So what I'd like to do then is compare two ETFs, uh, the VanEck International Value ETF, and the ticker code for that is VLUE, with Vanguard International Shares, which is a traditional market cap index fund. They, they both follow a MISCI index, so Morgan's and Stanley index. One is a value index, one is just the market cap index. So Vanguard International ETF, which is uh, VGS, is the ticker code for that one. So when we have a look at uh, technology exposure in both these ETFs, pretty similar. The VanEck product has 25.6% invested in technology and the Vanguard one, 27.3%. So not too far off, which is good. That's a tick from my perspective because we want that tech exposure. But where it differs is both the geographical allocation and also the valuation metrics. So the VanEck uh, VLUE, it has about a 40% exposure to the US market. That makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that we're not all US or heavily invested in the US, particularly given that US market is pretty highly priced. Whereas the Vanguard ETF has almost 74% exposure into the US, which is almost an all time high in terms of US exposure. When we look at the PE ratios, the Van Eck one has a PE ratio of 12.2 times, well below the 16 to 20 that I just mentioned to be a normal PE. Uh, whereas the Vanguard uh, traditional market cap index PE is almost about 24 times. So double the amount of the Vanguard fund. And even the, on the price to book measure, it's more substantial. So price to book ratio for Vanek is 1.2 times. Uh, in the index, so the Vanguard fund, 3.6 times, three times higher in terms of evaluation metrics. Interestingly enough, the dividend yield is higher under the value fund as well, about 3.4% in terms of a dividend yield, which is pretty good for international and international exposure, whereas the uh, Vanguard fund, 1.6%. So half the dividend yield, at least you're banking a little bit more income, which I think reduces your risk. So I like VLUE because it still gives us exposure to the tech sector, which we really want, I would argue, would be silly not to have that tech exposure. But it's not growth at any cost, it's growth at a reasonable cost. We're actually investing in these companies, which are the top 200, 250 companies in the VanEck fund uh, that are the most uh, attractively priced from a value perspective. And so I think it's a great investment, a way to still maintain exposure to both the US market and international markets, uh, maintain exposure to technology, but with a value overlay to uh, reduce portfolio risk, and I would argue expose the portfolio to higher than average returns. And that is the way that I would navigate the, the significant concentration in US large cap stocks. I hope that's useful, and I hope it's a good example of how portfolio construction and asset allocation decisions can add real value. Cheers.